I'd like to take a moment to call up today our esteemed panel. So please, panelists, come to the table. Richard, please come to the table. learning 
teach. I just finished compiling a summer reading list for my law students who are just wrapping up the most difficult their first year of law school, a bibliography of sorts to cultivate an exposure to the history because we are becoming increasingly destined to repeat the tragedies of our past, largely because of a collective and more individual ignorance. Second, to teach, to teach, teach civics. If you aren't yet engaged with your local schools, the social studies departments, I teach civics in Cedar Grove in Essex County, I teach civics in Newark, just a few blocks from here, to sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And Richard, what's the first excerpt that I assign to the 11, 12, 13 year olds? Passages from the color of law. We talk about those, and then I ask the children to look around that classroom. The stark singularity of the demographics that the kids observe is not by chance. Richard began this morning by calling that for what it is. It is a product of a form of insidious de facto and de jure de jure, as a matter of law, segregation and discrimination. We can teach formally, and I'm delighted to share my civics curriculum with all who might be interested, but we can also teach more organically. I was in an Uber driving from uh, West Harlem down to Lower Manhattan, and we passed Stuyvesant Town. And the Uber driver passing Stuyvesant Town in um, the 20s on the east side of New York City said, and look at this, this is a really good um, affordable housing area. And look how nicely that's kept up. And the point was, and so look, there are opportunities, no matter that New York City is gentrifying, as is Newark, as is most of what previously uh, we refer to euphemistically as inner cities. Richard Rothstein would encourage us to call those what they are, government engineered and created ghettos. As we drove past Stuyvesant City, I said to the driver, but do you realize that Stuyvesant Town is the product of aggressive social engineering at the hands of government that was segregationist patently by design. In the 1940s, the government took 18 of the blocks that were Stuyvesant Town, a racially integrated community, and by eminent domain, transferred those blocks to the Metropolitan Life Company, a developer, that then ordained segregationist policies to shut out the African-American families who had previously dwelled there. So that still today, in 2018, Stuyvesant Town, which remained somewhat affordable through rent controls and the passing on of those benefits intergenerationally, is predominantly, overwhelmingly white. This so-called accessible development is anything but accessible. There was one of those awkward moments of silence <laughs> after that conversation. And the funny part was that I, I then went on and I said, look, just give me your contact information. I'm going to send you some literature, some data. And he said, you need to get out of the car. <laughs> to think that maybe, maybe something good happened because we were engaged with each other. So to cultivate proximity, to learn more, and then to teach what we're learning, and then to engage as civic actors, the Newark Civic Trust, our hometowns, show up 
for your town council meetings, your zoning board meetings, where not in my backyard is alive and well as municipalities struggle to eradicate exclusionary zoning ordinances and townships listen to the cacophony of angry voices declaring, Mount Laurel won't come here. Yes, it will. <laughs> yes, it must. And we've got to, we've got to allay the fear mongering and the parade of horribles that has become entrenched, as April said, in how we think about poverty and how we think about exclusion. We pathologize it. It's your fault. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps, which is my least favorite of all expressions. First, because it is a physical impossibility. <laughs> Pull yourself up by a damn bootstrap. And second, if you're poor, you don't afford boots. So, so. My neighbor is me. My neighbor is me. There's a Nigerian proverb, and my latest scholarship uh, begins with this. Until the lion has a historian, the hunter will always be the hero. We've got to be learning the stories of the people who are afflicted and suffering in derelict housing at the hands of slumlords who game the system. We've got to be fighting against the practice of blacklisting, where tenants living hand to mouth are afraid to complain because if they do, they are relegated to the scarlet letter of a blacklist that will condemn their chances at any other shot at an affordable unit. We've got to be educating a country that is increasingly devolving into 140 character tweets that are misinformed. A secretary of HUD who casts as social engineering of the worst order any attempt at remediating the abuses of the past that yield the horrors of the present. We can do better, we must do better. Change agents, all. I will say briefly and then turn it over to our learned panel. We're working on legislative change. Please write to your state legislators in support of two bills that Senators Rice and Cody have advanced. S805 would eliminate the red posting requirement for tenants asserting a habitability requirement. S806 would eliminate the practice of tenant blacklisting to allow tenants to feel some restored sense of agency and opportunity to register the well-founded complaint in the hands of landlords who too often are inclined to exploit their grossly superior bargaining power. Newark is rolling out now a right to counsel for low-income tenants. The aim is to allow that program to thrive, to succeed, so that it might become a model for statewide replication. We learned this week that by U.S. Supreme Court pronouncement, organized sports betting is now legalized. That means hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue for our state. Where will those funds be allocated? They must be allocated here. Get involved in some of that decision making. It starts with a letter. It starts with a comment in the comment section. I write often about these issues and my law students are so good and have such beautiful hearts. 
And they'll say to me, Professor Francis, you wrote for the Star Ledger about a right to counsel for the desperately poor. But did you ever read the comment section? Those comments are so mean. Those comments are us, them. Those comments are why should they be entitled to that? I'm not. And my answer is always, and you write your own comment. You write your own, because it's not that the haters are the majority. It's just that they've become the loudest. So we've got to keep showing up. In the context of doing what it is that must be done, finally, uh, finally, I, I encourage all of us because we're here because a conspiracy of circumstances, rather divine, has called us into this room. I, I believe that uh, part of the reason that perhaps the movement towards social justice and civil rights um, has, has sometimes seemed to have lost some of its steam is its increasingly uh, secular bend. Um, I, we've got to be talking about the divine, that the good in some is indeed in all, if we might only take a moment to recognize that. I'm a person of faith. I believe deeply that there is a God. I believe that as children of God, we are all entitled to essential human dignity. That housing is a human right because of that essential So maybe it might be, maybe it might be that the best is on its way. We've certainly reached a tipping point moment, so let's all stand on those scales together. Let's all stand on those scales together. And I ask you now, as a symbolic gesture, to please, with me, with this panel, with the lions in this room, like Yanira Cortez and other tenants who have suffered and struggled, like the scholars, like the academics, like the visual artists, like the change makers, champions of the underdog, voices for those who have yet to find their own that all of us endeavor to be, take one moment now to stand. And as you stand, say in your hearts and out loud, we stand together. We stand together. We stand together.